Hi there! After nine long episodes spent designing, testing and adjusting the capabilities of our Curve Tracer, it is now time to conclude the series by putting together all the parts in a nice case that will definitely stand out in our lab. While doing that, though, please take a moment to like the video, it will cost nothing to you, but you will help me a lot in making this channel glow. And now, let's begin. Here is the 3D view of the case design. I made it in such a way that the front panel will have more space for the controls and a flat area for the device under test socket, as well as the BNC connectors for the oscilloscope. The bottom of the case is divided into sections that will host the various boards making up the device, as well as the transformer for the power supply. Notice the holes in the back for the power cable and for the fuse holder. In the front there is instead the space for the power switch and a power on indicator made with an LED. The front panel is divided into two sections. The top one has the space for the DUT socket and for the two BNC connectors for the X and Y axis for the oscilloscope. The other section is oriented at an angle to have a surface larger than the one we would with a flat horizontal panel. Here you can see the big square hole for the liquid crystal display and the holes for the switches and potentiometers that control the various functions of the curve tracer. Here is the 3D printed case for the instrument. You can clearly see the locations for the various boards inside it. On the front I have already mounted a red power switch and on the back there is already the fuse holder and the grommet to protect the power cable from scratches. And here is the front panel which will be mounted on top of the case in this way, making it easier to handle all the controls of the curve tracer. I have also laid down on the blue mat all the components and the boards that will have to fit inside the case and on the panel. Here is the front panel again, which has now been fitted with all the labels pertinent to the various controls of the device. I have now bolted all the boards and the transformer to the bottom of the case, and I have installed the front panel components. Here are the BNC connectors for the connection to the oscilloscope, and this is the socket I will be using to connect the DUTs to the curve tracer. They can be connected directly on the socket, or, for bigger components, I can connect some wires terminating with clips that will attach to the DUT terminals. The socket is divided into four sections. The two above are connected in parallel, so I can use the socket pins to easily attach any sort of small components. The two sections on the bottom are identical to the ones on the top, but we can select the pins on the bottom or the pins on the top through a simple switch, so we can go back and forth between one component and another to easily compare them. Here is a view of the back of the panel, where you can see that the wiring has not been done yet. So what it is left to do is to run all the wires across the boards in the case and the elements of the front panel to complete the assembly of the curve tracer. This diagram represents all the connections between the panel components and the boards in the bottom case. There are also some additional resistors that are not on the boards and will be connected directly to the switches terminals. All the switches with the same number, but a different letter, are actually one single double throw switch with multiple poles. In particular, switch S2 takes care of wiring the whole circuitry for use with a sine wave or with a ramp and ladder. Switch S1 selects between DUT1 and DUT2. Switch S4 is for the power supply, and switch S3 indicated with SW1 is the rotary switch used to select different load resistors for the component under test. This one instead is a picture of the whiteboard where I described all the connections across the boards and the components on the back of the front panel. 
You can use this one as a visual aid for wiving all the parts of the curve tracer. This is the transformer to power the whole device. It is more powerful than the one I used for the initial bench tests. This one will actually be capable of providing up to about 2 amps for testing power components. I am now installing the fuse in the fuse holder. The fuse is supposed to allow up to 500 mA through the primary of the transformer. So, the 110 volt AC enters in the box through the power cord. The hot wire goes to the fuse holder first, and from there to the power switch, and then back to the first wire of the primary. The neutral wire instead goes directly to the second wire of the transformer. The wires for the transformer's secondary are connected to the input of the power supply board. The power switch is currently off, and all these wires coming from the boards are not currently connected to anything. Let's now measure the outputs of the power supply. Powering the device. Now let's measure the AC voltage coming in. And now the 5 volt DC. The plus 15 volt. And finally the minus 15 volt. All seems to be fine, so we can move on to complete the wiring. Ok, the plus 5 volt and the plus and minus 15 volt are now connected to this pile of boards. And now the power supply is also connected to the other boards on the case bottom, for which you can see the red, black and yellow wires going from one board to the other. All the wires coming out of the board's stack are now connected to the appropriate switches on the front panel and to the LCD screen. And the voltage amplifier is also properly connected. Going back to the back of the front panel, these are the connections to the sockets for the DUTs. These are the BNCs for connecting the X and Y axis of the oscilloscope. The only one actually connected right now is the X axis. I will connect the Y axis wires later on. This one is the switch S2 with its numerous poles. It is operated through a push button on the front of the panel. These are the two multi turn potentiometers for the ladder and ramp amplitudes. I have chosen to use multi turn potentiometers to be able to better adjust the values I need. I have used the 10 turn potentiometers. This one is the rotary switch that selects the chosen load resistor for the DUT. And these are the switches to set the polarity of the ramp, the polarity of the steps, the number of steps in the ladder, 4 or 8, and the one to select whether the DUT needs to be controlled in current or in voltage. At this point, we should be able to turn on the instrument and verify that the ramp and the ladder are correctly generated according to the position of the switches, and that the LCD is controlled correctly. So let's put on the cover temporarily, and since it slides down very easily, I have momentarily put a couple of wires in place on the top screws to prevent the sliding from happening. Let's now turn the switch on. And yes, the LCD is already working. Let's now connect the oscilloscope to the X-axis to see if the ramp is produced correctly, and let's connect the other probe of the oscilloscope to the socket pin where the ladder is supposed to come out. And here are the two signals on the oscilloscope, exactly as we expected. Now switching the number of steps of the ladder to 8, and the shape of the ladder on the oscilloscope changes accordingly. Back to 4 steps, changing the polarity of the ladder, bringing it back to the previous state, and doing the same polarization changes to the ramp, and of course we can also adjust the amplitude of the ramp, and that of the ladder. Everything seems to work fine, so let's move on. Right now, all but this last board has been connected. This is the board that handles the level adjustments for the measurements visible on the display. The switch that rewires the whole system to define the curve generation method is now fully wired. The Y-axis has been fully connected, and the only thing left to do is to make it possible to generate it by the measurements on the display. 
Let's run some more tests to make sure everything works fine so far. The oscilloscope is connected and ready and there are no components attached to the socket. Let's try to see if the open circuit trace is actually what we expect, a neat and straight horizontal line. By the way, note how all the numbers on the display right now are randomly changing, and that is because there is no signal yet coming to the inputs of the analog to digital converters of the Arduino Nano, and so what we are measuring is just noise. So, back to our test, we can see the expected straight horizontal line when I increase the ramp level. As we mentioned already, this is the socket we can use to connect the DUTs to the curve tracer. The upper and lower rows can be selected using this switch, so we can have two components inserted in the socket at the same time, and we can quickly switch between the two of them to make comparisons, for example, when we are looking for a couple of transistors that behave exactly the same way. The right and left side of each row are in parallel, so we can use either one or the other, or we can even put components across when they are bigger and don't have pinned so close to each other. You can see that I have currently put a short circuit on the upper row, so we should now see an almost vertical line on the oscilloscope once we generate the trace. Increasing the ramp level with no load resistor, and the line is practically vertical as we expected from a short circuit. Let's try now with the resistor. Increasing the ramp level, and here we have a straight line with a slope representing the resistor's value. Now testing with a diode, and here is its trace where we can actually see the forward voltage at which the diode starts conducting current. I am now putting a load resistor in series, and the current is now limited because of the resistor, so it does not increase rapidly. Let's now see what happens with a capacitor. And we see a circular closet line typical of reactive components. Changing the various parameters on the curve tracer and adding load resistors to it, we see that the curve changes, although keeping the same circular and closet shape. Let's now see what we can do with a transistor. Selecting a control current, since transistors require that, adjusting also the range for the current, increasing the ramp level, now increasing the ladder level, and we can see the characteristics of the transistor appearing on the oscilloscope screen. Ok, I, I think we have seen enough now and everything seems to work correctly, so we can go back to the wiring and finally connect the board for handling the measurements. And here you can see the last wires connected to the board and the Arduino. Let's now cover the curve tracer and see if the measurements work fine. Well, first the numbers on the display are now stable, since we have connected everything together, and therefore there is no more noise at the analog to digital converter inputs. And now, increasing the ramp level, we can see the actual value of the ramp on the display, and similarly increasing the level of the ladder, we can measure the level of each step of the ladder. And remember, the numbers indicate the level of each step, not the total level of the ramp. Also, the display indicates both a voltage and a current. However, remember that although we see both, only the one that is actually selected is a valid measurement, the other one is not. I did so to both simplify the wiring and the software. As long as we know our settings, we know what are the valid measurements and what we need to discard. The instrument is now complete and closed, and we just need to verify that we can still make measurements on it. I have connected a power transistor, and I added a small load resistor to its collector. Now let's go to the oscilloscope. Increasing the ramp level. Now increasing the control current on the base and we can see this beautiful diagram of the transistor. Actually, if we move the origin of the axis to the bottom left, we can even expand the characteristics and have a much better view. And of course, 
We can also make qualitative curves using the sine wave method instead of the ramp and ladder, which makes possible to test in circuit components. To test that, let's remove the transistor from the socket and connect instead a diode. Recentering the axis, switching to sine wave, and here is the diode characteristic where we can even measure the forward voltage of about 0.7 volt. Note also how the x-axis is now reversed. Not having these polarizations, the orientation of the curve on the oscilloscope screen is now depending on the orientation of the component in the socket. We can expect to see one or both axes totally reversed from their normal position. Also, whenever we use the sine wave method, we always have a 3K resistor in series with the component to avoid damaging it, since we cannot control the level of the sine wave. Well, we have finally reached the end of this series. We have designed and created a nice instrument that can be of great help when testing components in circuit, and also we can take measurements on single components to design circuits knowing their exact functional characteristics, even when we don't have readily available data sheets. Oh, wow, now that I think about it, I just realized I did not connect the power on diode on the front panel. <laughs> well, that is something that can still be done later on. I just need to power it from the plus 5 volt available in the case through a 220 ohm resistor. Not a big deal, I can certainly do that later. And maybe there is some other improvement I can make to the device, like trying to further reduce the flickering of the image in certain conditions, or even adding a voltage amplifier to the output of the y-axis, so I don't have to push too much the sensitivity of the oscilloscope when the currents are very low. This way, uh, the noise from external cables will not bother us on the oscilloscope screen. But what do you think? Should I make these improvements? Are there any further improvements I could make? Let me know in the comments, and if you guys come up with something useful, I could make a new video just for that. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next video, and as usual, happy experiments!